the issue comes up all the time. Uh, a lot of people say, well, listen, you guys talk about these things and, and you and you lay them out. And then when you, you talk about what it is we can do about it, uh, it seems pretty hopeless. We're all doomed anyway. Uh, why bother if we're all doomed? Now, <laughs> here here's the interesting kind of conversation I started to get into. And I want to know if, if, if you... Uh, uh, feel the same way that I do, that this is the, the, the best understanding that I can possibly put forward about it. And, and, and it is, it is this. And also I have a, a key question I, I just dug up here, which somebody sent me some weeks ago, uh, related to Hiram, Hiram Abiff, by the way, and, uh, a few things connected to that. But before I get there, overall philosophy, uh, where, whereas, you know, listen, if there's nothing we can do about any of this, then why talk about it? Um, here, here's the reality of the situation, Jordan, and, and I want to see if, if you agree with what it is that I see. At any moment, in truth, um, th- there is a huge difference between what can be done and what will feasibly be done on the planet. For instance, there's actually, absolutely no reason for anyone on this planet to suffer for lack of food, shelter, clothing, any resource. That's just broad strokes reality. Now, the circumstances that have been created, the systems that have been put into place, the individuals who wish to control scarcity, now, they they may have all sorts of ideas about how this cannot be done, but the truth is, that even, you know, those who scream about overpopulation and how there's way too many people on the planet and everything else, and I believe that they have been sort of programmed to feed into an agenda to help out with the idea that it's a good thing when so many people die off and suffer. The reality is it's not necessary. There is enough for everyone on this planet right now to not be hungry, to not be homeless, to not be without resource. It's just that simple. Now, does that mean that the circumstance is going to emerge tomorrow? Does that mean that effectively we could see, well, theoretically, yes. (laughs) Theoretically, if we could all make an agreement to stop killing each other, if we could all theoretically make an agreement that distribution among everyone to be equal and all that kind of, that could happen. Now, I know some people are out there going, oh, you sound like a socialist, communist, whatever, ism, ism, ism. I'm not talking about isms. I'm not talking about anything other than hard facts. There's no reason that this could not be done except for these systems and these other isms which have been put into place. Now, does that mean it's going to happen? No. But could it be done? Yes. So here's the truth about what it is we can do about this system that is in place here. I do believe that if on mass, all of us, you know, the, the rest of us, not the middle managers, <laughs> And not the elites, obviously, but if all the rest of us collectively turned our force into one particular direction and decided that we were going to abandon the system as it stands and decided that we were going to cooperate and do some of those things I was just talking about, all of this would become meaningless overnight. Could that happen is another question entirely, but... Is it something that theoretically could be done if you could? Yes, it is, isn't it? So it's kind of a hard place to be in when you see something that can be done. But is it likely? Is it really, truly possible in the world in which we live? Well, that's another story. Is that one of those struggles you kind of have internally every now and then where you got to say, well, listen, I know that we can change all this overnight, but... Will it get done? Can it really, you know, feasibly, realistically get done? Is that something that you go through as well? Yes. <clears throat> yes, I have been concerned with that all my life because I know that there are things we could do as humans because we're all very, very powerful. Uh, even the scriptures showed that. Even God saw that was in the in the Bible. It said that, Man, it says, God looked down from heaven upon the earth and saw that the thoughts of men are bad all the time, but that uh, at the time when they were building the Tower of Babel, God said, if you leave mankind alone, there's nothing he can't do. And, you know, he can do whatever he wants to do. And so you divide the language so that you know, he can't do what he wanted to do. You divide the language at the time of the, of the building of the Tower of Babel, 
because whatever it is that mankind collectively decides they want to do, they can do. Mm. And uh, we've decided a long time ago we want to go into space. Well, now we're in space. We're out there doing things that we are not even told. The people are not even being told what we are capable of doing and are doing right now in space. And so I think, yes, we could change the world. But the last time we actually had a legitimate a legitimate way to actually change the direction of the human family was back in 1770s when the founding of the United States of America. Uh, it was um, Thomas Paine, the guy who actually came up with the idea and promoted the idea of an American Revolution and come up with the idea of signing a Declaration of Independence and a Constitution. It was Thomas Paine who actually was the the brain behind what we call the Great Awakening of the American Revolution to found the United States of America on the basis of law and reason and logic and intelligence. And uh, And he said, Thomas Paine wrote, that we now, in 1776, with the founding of the United States of America, he said, we now have the opportunity to completely restart the whole world over again. Because they realized that uh, setting up a country that was based on the freedom of the individual and protecting of individual rights of individual people that the freedom of mankind would explode all over the earth and it would change the whole destiny of the human race if we were allowed to be free. But this is precisely what the European royalty did not want. They're not interested in their slaves being free. And, and so that's why, that's why Martin Luther King was, one of his famous quotes was that, Slaves have never gone to their masters and, and asked for freedom. They don't do that. The only way you get freedom is you take it. You you demand it. You demand your freedom. And you do something about it. And that's what happened in 1776. A lot of people decided they'd had enough of European royalty with kings and queens riding around in gold and chariots and flipping their cigarette butts on you and your children and uh, so they've decided they've had enough. Uh, and that's what, what you know. Thomas Paine said. We have in, in our hands now the opportunity to start the whole world all over again because they believed that there was a God who was divinely orchestrating the founding of the United States of America on the basis of human dignity and freedom. And it would have worked. It was on its way to working. People were flocking to this country from all over the world at the founding of this country. People were coming here and then spending whatever they could, whatever they had to get here to be a part of the great American experiment. But the only problem was is that the laws did not stick. What the founding fathers said they wanted and didn't want uh, the the enemies of this country got around it. They went around the founding fathers. And therefore, the same tyranny and the same criminal elements that were running all over Europe, uh, you know, and the criminality of Europe, and the, uh, and the elites who were running the show in Europe actually came to America. And the secret societies and the religious orders of Europe, they came to America knowing that you cannot let these people found their own country on freedom and liberty and do their own thing because they're going to affect Europe. It's going to affect the whole world and it's most likely going to affect all the royalty of the world. Royalty is, royalty is above the world. And if you let the common working class people decide that they want to be free, you're going to have a serious problem between the millions and millions of working class people against the handful of the royal people who don't have to work. They let you work for them. And so the royalty of Europe realized that if you let these Americans do what they're doing, 
there's going to be trouble galore. You're going to have more problems than you can even imagine for the elites. So you cannot let these people do what they're talking about doing. You've got to stop them in their tracks. Well, as it turns out, the same people that were destroying the peoples and the human race of Europe and the rest of the world came here to America and got themselves set up, and they came over with money and power, political power and money, and moved into our little experiment we call America, and they started buying into our system and collectively buying into our wor- our world that we were building, and today they today now run America. So we did not, we didn't follow through. We knew who our enemies were. We fought them to even found this country. But I'll be damned if they didn't come in later quietly. They moved in. And they've destroyed our country, they've destroyed our people, they've destroyed our future, they've destroyed everything. And the reason why is because they were the royalty, and they didn't want America to be alive. They didn't want the American people to do what they were almost ready to do, and that is to take over the world for freedom and liberty and justice. And so the founding fathers, whether we don't, most people don't know this, But the founding fathers of this country realized who the real, legitimate, bottom-line enemies of America and human dignity and freedom are. And they said they would not allow, this was in the original founding of of America, that there there were two groups that the founding fathers did not want in this country. If you go back and look at the history of America, you will see there were two very large and powerful organizations that the founding fathers did not want to have anything to do with, and they did not want them in this country, and you couldn't have them in this country. And that was the Catholic Church. The Vatican was the single biggest enemy of freedom, dignity, and honor the world has ever known. It was a Roman system, a dirty and fascist Roman system of totalitarianism and fascism and, and slavery in Europe. <clears throat> it was the brains behind the wars, the revolutions, the violence, the bloodshed of the world. The Vatican. The Vatican was the biggest criminal organization on the earth, and the founding fathers of America realized that, and they said that Catholic Church will not be allowed in this country, period. They want nothing to do with it. People can have their own religion, fine, but the Catholic Church as an organization cannot operate on American property, on American land. They did not want the Vatican having anything to do with this country. Why? Because they knew the Vatican is run by a man we call the Holy Father. And he rep- why is he holy? Because he represents the God. So he's a Godfather. Do you understand what the terms mean? And so we we allowed the Catholic Church to come into America a long time ago, and with it came the Mafia, La Cosa Nostra, all the underworld organizations, which are all coming from the Catholic religion, and the and southern and South uh, South America, Central America, and when America was being founded back east with New England. And, uh, and, and of course, when Rome moved into Britannia, the Roman Empire moved into Britannia or the UK, the center of operation for Rome in England was York, England. York, England was the city where Rome officially uh, run the, U- the United Kingdom. So Rome actually was dominating the United Kingdom, the UK. And, and the city where Rome operated from was called York, England. And so today we have something called New York. New York is the empire state. It represents the Roman Empire. It's the empire state in New York. The dirtiest, filthiest, political, underworld organization of, of organized crime the world has ever known. It is out of New York that the Communist Party has come. 
It's where the drug running and the drugging of, uh, of Western civilization goes through New York, the international banking cartels, all of the pagan, filthy, and dirty religions coming out of the Roman Empire, the whole entire complex that we call the United States government today is a Roman fascist Jesuit system of tyranny. And people do not know, they have no idea in the world what is going on in religion on the earth today. All we know is that we just do what we're told to do because when we're born, we're brought into a system and we grew up in a system where we never questioned anything. We didn't know anything. And it's just as well we didn't question anything because the adults around us didn't know anything. So nobody can tell you. And the very few people who were wise and well intelligent and, intelligent and wise and well informed who did know, they will be killed off. Slowly but surely, they will be thrown into prisons and killed off by the conspirators who are trying to overthrow our great country. And this is what's going on today. New York is the center for all of the filthiest, dirtiest stuff going on on the earth today. It's the empire state, the Roman Empire. And today the empire state is now in decline, just like the Roman Empire was in the 5th century. We are now, as America, in decline. We've lost our freedoms. We've lost our our basis for operation. We've lost our industrial. We've lost intelligence. We've lost everything. We've just lost virtually everything that we built up and had going for us at the founding of this country. We've lost it all because the people who are trying to destroy our country are the Jesuit Roman Catholic system in America. You need to wake up and find out who your enemies really are. The Pope wears a Pope's mitre, that strange headdress the Pope wears. It represents a a god named Dagon, D-A-G-O-N. Dagon was a Phoenician, Canaanite, old ancient god from the from the ancient world four or five thousand years ago has nothing to do with Jesus, has nothing to do with Christianity whatsoever. The Vatican does not represent Christianity or Jesus. It represents Rome. All roads lead to Rome. Mm-hmm. Our governmental systems, our corrupt societies, our corrupt laws, drug addiction, alcoholism, murder, violence, wars, all of the corruption of the human race, is now centered in New York, the Empire State. Therefore, we now have the United Nations, a conspiratorial apparatus to destroy individual countries and peoples all over the world. The United Nations, the country itself, is dying because of the UN. It's an incredible story about betrayal and how we got into the mess we were in And I don't think there's any hope for us to get out of it because the people love the holiness of the of the church. They love to go to church and worship the Lord, and and they think that they're doing something wonderful and holy, and it makes them feel well, it makes them feel good, never realizing for a moment what the church really is, Mm -hmm. where it really came from, and how it grew out of the Roman Empire, and today. Washington, D.C. is, in fact, the center for the new Roman Empire. And the brains and the money and the, and the organization comes out of New York, the Empire State. My God, what a story there is to tell that people would wake up, but they're not going to wake up because they would much rather have their, their religions and their holiness, that, like the Bible says, you have chosen for yourselves your teachers. People are not interested in what God is doing in the universe. They're interested in what their teachers tell them. So they go to, and you can't even be a minister in America unless you go to a college and get a degree from the government. It has to come out of New York and Washington, D.C. to get a degree before you can be a minister. So they have Christian universities. 
All I'm saying is that you need to wake up to who your enemies really are. Your enemy is the religion that you practice today in the world today is referred to as Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. All three are religions of an ancient pagan world. And this is what happened in the ancient world. It's happening today. The more we change, the more we stay the same. We're still killing each other over religion because that's what religion is. It is a murderous, death-dealing place on the earth that is destroying the individual and destroying countries. Mm -hmm. We need to wake up and find out who is really behind the elites. And who do the elites we you know we talk about the Rothschilds. Well, the actual history of the Rothschild banking family is that they were the bankers for the Vatican. Mm. They were handling the Vatican's money. So when you talk about how wealthy and rich the, the Rothschilds were, they were wealthy and rich because they made money off the Vatican. The Vatican was running the whole entire Roman Empire since Caesar fell in the fifth century A.D. The Vatican has for 1,600 years dominated Europe. And for 1,600 years, Europe has dominated the world. All roads lead back to Rome. The Catholic Church is, in point of fact, the outward sign of a very powerful ancient secret society that founded Rome and has, and has been officially destroying our country and our freedoms and everything that we've worked for in this country. And the people love it. The people think it's so holy, they crawl on their knees to the Pope, never realizing he represents God and he's the Holy Father. He's a Godfather. You better wake up and find out who your enemies really are.